Question 21. On a Windows network, why is it easier to break into a local account than an ad account? Answer. Windows local accounts have a great deal of baggage tied to them, running back a long long way to keep compatibility for user accounts. If you are a user of passwords longer than 13 characters, you may have seen the message referring to this fact. However, Active Directory accounts have a great deal of security tied onto them, not the least of which is that the system actually doing the authenticating is not the one you are usually sitting at when you are a regular user. Breaking into a Windows system if you have physical access is actually not that difficult at all, as there are quite a few dedicated utilities for just such a purpose, however that is beyond the scope of what we'll be getting into here. Question 22. What is the Kia Triangle? Answer. Confidentiality, integrity, availability. As close to a code, for information security as it is possible to get, it is the boiled down essence of InfoSec. Confidentiality keeping data secure. Integrity keeping data intact. Availability keeping data accessible. Question 23. What is the difference between a HIDS and a NIDs? Answer. Both acronyms are intrusion detection systems. However, the first is a host intrusion detection system whereas the second is a network intrusion detection system. And HIDS runs as a background utility in the same as an antivirus program for instance, while a network intrusion detection system sniffs packets as they go across the network looking for things that aren't quite ordinary. Both systems have two basic variants, signature-based and anomaly based. Signature based is very much like an antivirus system, looking for known values of known bad things, while anomaly looks more for network traffic that doesn't fit the usual pattern of the network. This requires a bit more time to get a good baseline, but in the long term can be better on the uptake for custom attacks. Question 24. You are an employee for a tech department in a non-management position. A high-level executive demands that you break protocol and allow him to use his home laptop at work. What do you do? Answer. You would be amazed how often this happens, even more so in the current BYOD environment. Still, the easiest way out of this one is to contact your manager again and have them give a yay or nay. This puts the authority and decision where it needs to be, and gives you assistance if the department needs to push back. Stress can be real killers in position where you have to say no to people that don't like hearing it, so passing the buck can be a friend. Question 25. What is the difference between vulnerability and an exploit? Answer. A lot of people would say that they are the same thing, and in a sense they would be right. However, one is a potential problem while the other is an active problem. Think of it like this. You have a shed with a broken lock where it won't latch properly. In some areas such as major cities, that would be a major problem that needs to be resolved immediately, while in others like rural areas it's more of a nuisance that can be fixed when you get around to it. In both both scenarios it would be vulnerability. While the major city's shed would be an example of an exploit, there are people in the area, actively exploiting a known problem. Question 26. What is worse in firewall detection, a false negative or a false positive, and why? Answer. Far and away is a false negative. A false positive is annoying, but easily dealt with, calling a legitimate piece of traffic bad. A false negative however is a piece of malicious traffic being let through without incident, definitely bad. Question 27. What's better, a red team or a blue team? Answer. Another opinion question, more along the lines of where your interests lie. In penetration testing scenarios, a red team is trying to break in while a blue team is defending. Red teams typically are considered the cooler of the two, while the blue team is usually the more difficult. The usual rules apply like in any defense game. The blue team has to be good every time, while the red team only has to be good once. That's not entirely accurate given the complexity at work in most scenarios, but it's close enough to explain the idea. Question 28. What's the difference between a white box test and a black box test? Answer. Information given by the person commissioning the test. A white box test is one where the pen testing team is given as much information as possible regarding the environment, while a black box test is, well, a black box. They don't know what's inside. Question 29. What is the difference between information protection and information assurance? Answer. Information protection is just what it sounds like protecting information through the use of encryption, security software and other methods designed to keep it safe. Information assurance on the other hand deals more with keeping the data reliable, rate configurations, backups, non-repudiation techniques, etc.
Question 30. How would you lock down a mobile device? Answer. Another opinion question, and as usual a lot of different potential answers. The baseline for these though would be three key elements, an anti-malware application, a remote wipe utility, and full disk encryption. Almost all modern mobile devices regardless of manufacturer have anti-malware and remote wipe available for them, and very few systems now do not come with full disk encryption available as an option directly within the OS.